Hey there, here's a very insightful exercise that you can use to deepen your understanding of light and form. It's about ambient occlusion, the occlusion shadows that are created from surfaces that are close to each other and are blocking or occluding the ambient light in a scene. You can think of ambient light as light rays that are bouncing around the room or environment that you're drawing or painting, and these light rays end up coming from every possible direction. And because of that, ambient light brightens all the shadows in a scene. To understand what a huge effect ambient light has, we can look at the moon. Because in outer space there's no ambient light and no reflected light, so the shadows are completely black. On Earth, unless you're in a dark room with dark walls, there's always some amount of ambient light and you can judge how much there is by looking at how dark the shadows are. If you compare these two images, the Rembrandt on the left was painted in a dark room with a light shining only on the model, so the shadows are very dark, very little ambient light. In the Bougarou, we're outdoors and the sky is overcast. The sunlight is coming through the atmosphere and through the cloud layer, which are scattering the light in all possible directions. The shadows are getting so light that they're very hard to see. So that's ambient light. The sister effect to ambient light is ambient occlusion. The basic principle is that the closer two surfaces are to each other, the darker they get, as they are blocking or occluding the ambient light. So because of occlusion shadows, person's nostrils, for example, are usually quite dark, and the thin contact shadows where the sole of a shoe touches the ground are also dark for the same reason. Wherever anything is blocking the ambient light that's bouncing around the scene, you will see occlusion shadows. In 3D software, you can generate a render that shows nothing else except the ambient occlusion. This is called an AO pass. And white means no occlusion, a fully exposed area. Black means 100% occlusion. No light can get into that zone. The levels of gray in between show how strong the occlusion shadow is in any given area. In nature, ambient occlusion merges with all the other effects of light. So it's just a part of the puzzle, but it's an important part. Okay, so what we'll do is paint an AO pass for an existing image. This can be one of your drawings or paintings, or somebody else's work that you would like to study. It can also work for illustrations, photographs, movie stills, or even studies from life. So I've brought in an image from Jean-Baptiste Manche, a fantastic French illustrator. You should check out his work. And I'm duplicating his image and applying a black and white adjustment layer. And I'm adjusting the reds and yellows to create a uniform base for my ambient occlusion study. This will change depending on your image. What I'm trying to do is make everything fairly light and sort of hide the material differences. So that was the original image. It's such a great character. And uh, from here, it's very simple. I'm just painting out all the different materials, like the shiny metal buttons. I want to create a matte surface and only show ambient occlusion. So this button is getting a little bit closer to the beard area, so it will be a little bit darker. And I've started this before recording, so I'm going to switch over to where I was before I started recording. Let's see, I painted out a few more things. And really, the process is pretty simple. You just have to think about how close do these things get to each other? What is blocking the ambient light from reaching a certain area? And I've sped this up 500%. Unfortunately, I can't paint this fast. There's the occlusion shadow underneath the shoe. We'll have to get darker still, but it's a start. And these shoes are fairly exposed, so they, so they would be quite light. But then as we get closer to the legs, those legs will occlude each other, create some emit occlusion. And also on the ground, there will be some emit occlusion from the figure, the body occluding that area of the ground. So when you have shadows underneath people and things, part of that is just a regular cast shadow, and part of it is actually an occlusion shadow.
which is why I think this is good to practice and study and understand. We're trying to not have any materials left, no socks, no pants, it's all just a gray neutral material. And the uh, values are really determined by how close another surface is to the surface I'm rendering. So let this play, and there's really not much more to say. Just <laughs> paint out all the materials and think about how much ambient occlusion there will be. With something like this, it's important to get rid of all the lines too, to get a realistic, believable, physically accurate result. Music, please. Right, wrapping up. I could take it further, but gotta stop somewhere. 
And yeah, I think it's a really fun study thing to do. Also very insightful. So I hope this is something you're going to explore on your own for uh, your works or other people's artwork, paintings, to understand the lighting a bit more. And hint, hint, you can do this with any other light effect. You can paint just the reflected lights. You can paint just the form shadow, just the form light. Anything, any of these modeling factors you can study individually. So you remember to put them into your work when you draw and paint. Enjoy!